Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name's Phil and I am the Income School student. This channel is all about my membership in Project 24, which is a course that was set up by Jim Harmer and Ricky Kessler over at Income School. So today I want to celebrate the fact that I've been a member of Project 24 for six months. So I'm going to give you a detailed update of my website and everything that's happening. So stick around to find out more. So the purpose of today's video is basically to show you everything that's been happening with my main Project 24 website and also I want to share some of the lessons that I've learned and some things that perhaps I would have done differently if I knew this six months ago. So don't forget to watch until the end of the video. And um, so let's get into those stats. I want to tell you exactly what's been happening. So here are the numbers. Okay, so uh, we're here in my computer and I'm just going to go over some of the stats that I've got. So the first thing is I've written 65 posts um, over the last six months. I've got 13 YouTube videos and um, I haven't paid for any of that. I haven't outsourced any content on my main Project 24 website. So let's just go into the stats a little bit uh, more. So uh, as you can see, I've got 38 uh, response posts. 15 staple posts and 12 pillar posts. Um, so I'm, when you're writing your post, you, we start off with that seed in the ground, which is 30 posts, 10 of each type. And you can see I've clearly gone for the response post a little bit more. It really depends on your niche. And for me, at the moment, that's where my niche has taken me. That's where I found the most low-hanging fruit. So it may be different for you. You may have a lot more pillar posts or a lot more staple posts. And um, if you can, uh, I don't know if you can hear, there's some guy with an, uh, a power cleaner outside. So hopefully that's not too annoying. It's given me a bit of a headache. Anyway, moving on. Let's be professional about this. Okay, so as you can see, um, I've got about nine posts that are about seven months old, 15, six months old, uh, about eight, which are five months old, and 17 that are three months old. That's mainly what happened in the Co Warrior Content Challenge the other couple of months ago. Uh, eight, which are two, and five, which I've published in the last month. So that's um, all of the posts I've got. And as I said, I've got 13 videos on the YouTube channel, but I've really, I've got something like six subscribers, hardly any views. Most of them are getting fewer than 10 views and it, they've been up there for three or four months. Something I really need to get into uh, with the YouTube, um, but it's, it's one of those things, it's time consuming and uh, uh, I'm hoping that um, soon Jim and Ricky are gonna release a 60 step version of the YouTube course in Project 24. And then I'm gonna really hit YouTube and. Uh, you know, try and make that work for me as well. Um, okay, so moving on. So let's talk about what the numbers look like on the website. So um, you can see that I, I'm looking at the page views here. This is the entire uh, history of the website. I started it back in May, uh, around the 20th, 21st of May, 2019, and that's up until about yesterday, these stats. So we've got uh, in blue, you've got 100% of the page views, so it's all page views. Uh, organic traffic is the orange color and that's about 60 um, then I've, I've got this other sort of um, breakdown which is just people based in the United States that represents about 38% and then returning users 14% uh, so just some things to look at so generally if you're looking at the way that the numbers have gone up you can see at the beginning of the period not many page views and it's slowly building uh, towards the, you know, the last couple of weeks and months. I've, there's a few spikes here and there, and that is purely direct traffic. Um, that is normally something like uh, when I've uploaded uh, a lot of new uh, articles and I've had them indexed with Google Search Console. Um, and also I had a few kind of uh, blips where suddenly I'd get, I don't know, if I, if I was getting 20 page views a day, I'd have something like 50 uh, d additional direct page, page views. I don't know what Google was doing. Maybe they were checking things. Maybe they were ranking um, my uh, my posts differently. But uh, yeah, so that's what the bigger uh, blue spikes are. Uh, in the last month, 
I definitely saw a bit of a, a decline um, in the actual figures, but I don't know if that was something to do with an algorithm update or just the normal Google kind of testing a new website. I'm not too worried. I mean, it, you can see it goes up, it goes down. You know, they're just testing it. Nothing's going to really uh, hit for at least 12 months. So for six months, I think it's pretty healthy. Um, so you can look at the, the overall frigger, uh, the overall figures, let's say, and see how they break down. So all users, and that includes um, direct traffic, which for me is basically Google uh, testing my pages. So all users represent 2,326. Um, organic traffic is 1,402. Uh, people from the United States, that's 903. And that's 333 returning users, of which it, it may be me quite a lot. Um, I, I have definitely cut out my IP from uh, Google Analytics now, but you know I'm not sure how good it is because IP changes, you know, IP addresses change. So, anyway, it's just just for reference. Um, so you can see that the on time page uh, is a little bit different between all users and organic, but organic traffic around three minutes is not too bad. But that would definitely get me um, a couple of uh, maybe a couple of cents from uh, from ads because people were staying on the page more than a couple of seconds, uh, and you can see the bounce rate is somewhere between uh, eighty seven and ninety. Uh, interestingly enough, it seems that uh, Americans bounce more from my website than anyone else. Maybe that's because they get their answer straight away. Um, maybe it takes other people from other countries a little bit longer to read, I, I don't know. Um, and then we've got the exit rate, uh, which is quite useful to look at, um, which is from 80 to about 50% for returning users. So perhaps but returning users are sticking around for longer. Um, well, then again, well, then again, it could be me. Okay, so um, if you compare that, if we just look at the last month, so um, we can see that still um, blue represents all users, but organic traffic's gone up to about 72% compared to overall it's about 60%. So I'm getting more organic traffic as time goes on. Uh, more, more American users, so 43% compared to 38 overall. And the returning users, that's actually going down, so 13.93% and overall about 14%. So perhaps I'm writing more transactional kind of content. Perhaps people, um, you know, they just get their answers and not coming back. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you can still make a business from that as far as I understand. Um, so how does that break down when talking about the actual pages? Uh, where's that traffic coming from? So if I look at just the top kind of pages, um, so at the moment, overall, my top page is actually my home page, which is a bit uh, unusual. Um, that's getting about 15% uh, with all users, and uh, but only organic traffic, only 3.92%. So obviously, I think that's um, I think that's more Google kind of ranking me. Maybe maybe it's um, I want to say bots, but. Not too sure. It's a bit interesting, but the um, actual um, post that's bringing in the most traffic um, for for all users, it's about fourteen point twenty seven percent. Organic traffic is twenty two point ninety percent. That's a big problem. That's not good. Um, it's ideally you don't want anything to be representing more than about ten percent of your traffic, according to Jim and Ricky. Um, so this is a bit of an issue. So hopefully, because I've put on a lot more, um, a lot more content in the last two months, hopefully those numbers will kind of shift. But obviously, I've made a, I found a bit of a crack here in in the market, and I'm getting a bit of traffic. If we go down to the next post, um, it's yeah, organic traffic. It's getting about nine percent. Um, the the third most high ranking post is getting about seven percent and um, the one after that yeah about seven percent as well and then it goes down to about five percent and the last one I'll show you here 
and that's only getting about 2%. And you can see the numbers uh, that that represents uh, for the page views. So that is overall. If we look at the same kind of figures, so I'm for this month it's kind of changed around. So um, I'm not going to give you the URL for the, the post, but um, the top post is still the top post. Um, and it's actually the percentage of traffic it's getting is more. It's 26% um, compared to 22% overall. So it's still a bit of a problem. Um, my home page is now in second place. Uh, but again, for organic traffic, it's not getting uh, a lot of um, page views. And then um, the, the third um, most high ranking post is getting about 10%. The one after that is 8% and then goes down to 5%. And those, it's kind of changed change position. I think um, it's kind of hard, isn't it, without telling you what the URL is. But position five uh, here, uh, which was getting 7%, that's overtaken position four overall. So this month um, they've kind of swapped places. Um, so obviously I'm getting a bit more traction with a newer post because um, I can tell you that three out of the five posts I've shown you um, are the oldest posts that I have, The probably the first couple that I wrote about. And uh, the one that's kind of sort of going up in my list here, that is, probably from the last two to three months. Um, so it's obviously being ranked a little bit better and it's bringing in a bit more um, traffic. So that is the website, that's the page views. Um, that's what's happening at the moment. Let's talk about money because that's why we're doing it, right? We wanna get money out of this thing. So um, I'm not gonna quit my job just yet, but I have made some money. Um, if you didn't catch it, um, I had, I put up a video um, in the last couple of weeks about my first ever Amazon commission um, and I was very excited about that. I probably look like a bit of an idiot on camera but it's a very exciting thing. Um, so let's have a look at what the figures are now. So overall um, this is, I only put um, Amazon back onto my website about two months ago because in the first three months I didn't actually make any money. So um, the Amazon, uh, I, I got kicked out of Amazon um, associate program. Um, so since I've put it back in, uh, back on the website in September, I've got 55 clicks. I've made uh, two sales, which gives me a conversion of 3.64%. Um, so I've made Amazon nearly a hundred bucks and they've given me $4.45. That's two sales. Um, so one of the sales made uh, a whopping $4.40, and uh, no, sorry, $4.05, and the second one, um, I got a massive uh, 40 cents. So I'm not even making pizza day just yet, but you know, six months in, it's making some money. Um, I haven't put any ads on because I want to wait until I've got a lot more page views to take advantage of um, some of the premium ad brokers. But that's what my website's doing at the moment. That's 65 posts. So let's talk about how much time that's actually taken me to do. So um, let me just refer to my notes here so I can tell you. Um, so as I said, um, 65 posts of which um, 12 are pillar, 15 are staple and 38 are response posts. So um, the based on Project 24 standards of how long it takes you to write a post. Um, the response post probably took me about 76 hours. The staple post about 60 hours to write and the pillar post around 96. Now, I am, I, I come from a background of writing. I, I did this as a job for three years when I was living in France. Um, so I'm kind of used to writing. So possibly I've done that a little bit quicker. But that would put me at a total of about 232 hours to create those 65 posts. Um, and then on the YouTube, as I said, I've got about 13 videos and based on um, how long it took me to shoot the videos and probably editing 
is around an hour, if not more, for each video. That's around 20 ish, 20 to 25, maybe 30 hours in editing. Um, it really depends. I, I didn't actually record how long it took me. Um, but so, all in all, we're looking at about 250 hours to do this. Okay, so um, those are the stats. Let's move on and talk about what I've learned from the experience so far. Okay, so if you found those stats uh, useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll be sharing my stats as often as I can just to give you a real sort of insight into what it's like to uh, create one of these kind of websites. So let's talk about the things that I've learned from this experience. Well, the first thing I learned really is search analysis is the most important thing in the world when you're creating websites like this. And I wish I'd spent a lot more time on search analysis. But the problem is, if you've never done it before, um, you don't really know what you're looking for. And although the course in Project 24 is very useful and it goes into a lot of detail, you just need to practice a little bit. So I would recommend that when you get to step eight, which is search analysis in the 60 steps, you spend up to two or three days really going through everything and exploring, going down all the little rabbit holes and really find trying to find those 30 first post titles. So that, you know, there's low competition, but likely to be higher search volume. And that I didn't well, but since I am, um, a couple of months ago, I did the Warrior, uh, the Content Warrior Challenge, sorry. Um, I did a much better job with that. So it, it is a skill that develops, but you've got to do it a lot. So if you create your hit list and write 30 articles, you're, you're not doing search analysis. So that's why I went up to maybe a week doing your search analysis and really going you know, as deep as you can into it and really understanding your niche and finding those the low hanging fruit kind of queries and also those underserved topics. Another thing kind of connected to understanding the niche was I wish that I'd spent a lot more time researching my niche in general, uh, doing a lot more reading both online and in books and things and just gaining a little bit of knowledge. So what, I, what I've done is I, I have a niche that is kind of a hobby and I actually took the hobby up. It's something I'd been interested in for a long time before, uh, but I'd never done it before. But I started doing the hobby, and just through that, I did gain a lot of knowledge and practical skills. But I wish that before I'd even started writing a post, that I'd done all the background sort of research and learned a lot of the terminology and maybe some of the um, trending ideas within the niche, all those kind of things. Just spending a couple of weeks just really doing some general research. I think that's really gonna help you. And also, when you're writing your niche, um, sorry, when you're writing your posts, you're, you're not gonna be relying on other posts that you find in the SERP. So you're not just gonna be scraping information. So you'll be, you'll be able to reference back to books that you've read. You're gonna have sort of um, more general knowledge than other people that are just basically scraping information from other uh, webmasters. So I think it's really useful to do that extra legwork and just get down to the research even for a couple of days before you start um, the website, before you even start the 60 steps. Another thing is to get into a routine with the writing. Um, you've got to treat this like a job, especially if you don't have a lot of time to write. So for me, I really did treat this like a job. Um, my wife has a regular nine to five job. Um, and she goes to work sort of early in the morning, she comes back, or I, I go to my job by the time she gets back, but she would wake up and um, because I live in a small apartment, I'd wake up too. So I'd go to work as well. I'd, uh, I'd have my breakfast, I'd think about what I wanted to do that day, and I'd start writing. And I would write until lunch, and then I'd write for a couple of hours before I had to go to work. Um, I'd always be in the same space, I, I have an office space here, and I'd have my hit list, so I knew exactly what I needed to do for a particular day. I even started to uh, make a to-do list. So it's really a good idea to treat, list, treat it like a job and to get into a routine. Either you write at the same time every day or you write in the same place. You know exactly what you need to do. Um, everything should be as organized as it can be before you start writing. 
that way you only have to concentrate on writing that post so that's something I really learned during this process another thing and I, I have mentioned this before um, it was skipping topics or looking for the easier way in and this goes back to having you know not a lot of knowledge about the niche when I was starting so I would have my hit list and I found what I thought were good uh, queries to write about you know low competition and then I'd go through the hit list and it would be like oh, I don't really want to write that one today it seems a little bit too difficult or oh, it's not very inspiring today so I'd skip it so I ended up with maybe 50% of my posts they were stuff that prob they didn't hit they, they, they just didn't quite make it and I think it's because I chose the easy route so if you come up with a hit list if you choose a title um, and it's on your list write it if it's the next one write it if you don't you're just going to end up you know doing what I, I did and for the first 30 posts you know 50% of them probably I shouldn't have written so just be strict don't skip anything if it's on your list you've decided that it's worthy to be on your list just write it even if it's painful just write it and the biggest thing I learned because it's taken me a lot of time and effort to get to this stage six months down the line and to be honest I, I'm still not making any sizable amounts of money but it's motivation you have gotta be motivated and your friends and family aren't the best people aren't the best people to motivate you basically they don't quite understand what you're doing a lot of them might even be against what you're doing so you need to find like-minded people so things like going onto the income school YouTube channel and writing a comment you know you're gonna get the support you might even get the support directly from Jim and Ricky or if you join project 24 you've got the community which is a forum where we can go and ask questions you get almost instant answers and it's just the best way and only by talking to like-minded people are you going to have the motivation and the help to get the drive and not to give up um, and I found that really really useful I'm in that community every single day and it just helps me to remember why I'm doing this why I'm making the sacrifices why you know the, the long days the late nights and it's the only way you need to find people to support you and the best people to support you are people doing the same thing so as you've seen today I am making progress with the website but of course it is slow because what I'm trying to do is build purely organic traffic I mean that takes a lot of effort but it's not costing me any money it's only costing my time and effort which I think at the moment is a fair exchange so if you're interested in doing the same thing, I really do urge you to become a Project 24 member. So all it takes is just to sign up and start doing it today. If that's what you want to do, please use my link. It's in the description below. Or we'll go over to my website at incomeschoolstudent.com slash project24. Honestly, it's going to be the best decision you ever make and you're never going to regret doing this. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be giving you lots more content like this and sharing my journey. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, please do leave me a comment. I will answer any question you have. Um, and I'm even going to make a video if it's a really important question that I think everyone should know the answer to. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.